My name is Rainer and I'm going to show you some things about the development and realization of microfluidic polymer cartridges here at Fraunhofer IMM. My department is called Analysis Systems and Sensors and we are dealing with the development of polymer cartridges based on a microfluidic kit, meaning structures and layouts like for example valves or mixing elements. Together with our competences with regard to microstructuring, we realize automated systems demonstrators. Why do we do microfluidics and why in polymers? Miniaturization of sensors, devices and systems by means of microfabrication technologies enables automated analysis at the point of need. Microfluidic transports and prepares a sample on its way to a sensor where it is analyzed by either optical or electrochemical methods. Thermoplastic materials are well suited to fabricate microfluidic platforms due to their compatibility with mass production at low costs, meaning mostly injection molding. Why do we sometimes do micro-silicon sensors? It can be advantageous to integrate silicon parts into polymer cartridges to achieve dedicated measurement tasks using miniaturized sensors with special requirements, high precision, realizing high-density sensor arrays, and so on. IMM possesses 750 square meters clean room class ISO 724 dedicated to lithography, structuring, metrology and assembly processes for glass, silicon and polymers. Implementation can include numerical simulations leading to a computer-aided design layout which then needs to be realized and assembled. Today I will focus on rapid prototyping and small-scale manufacturing and bonding methods available here at IMM. Available manufacturing processes here at IMM include fine mechanics like CNC milling and turning, electro-discharge machining or laser ablation. These technologies can either be used directly as rapid prototyping technologies or can be used for building molds for hot embossing or injection molding. Each process obviously has several aspects to be taken into account with respect to resolution or aspect ratio and correlated efforts and costs. For rapid prototyping, a common method is CNC milling using micro mills for structuring thermoplastics. This is a flexible method allowing the quick implementation of changes if necessary. The video shows the milling process on a clamped workpiece using active liquid cooling to remove excessive heat during the milling process. Another flexible rapid prototyping method is laser cutting or laser ablation. We have a small CO2 laser system here at IMM with a wavelength of 10.6 micrometers for engraving and cutting polymers, for example, Teflon seals. This video shows how fast the laser engraving process in plastics can be using the CO2 laser system. Shown here is a peak plastic which is marked with the frown of IMM logo. Another laser system here at IMM which can be used for rapid prototyping is a so-called frequency doubled neodymium yak laser with a wavelength of 532 nanometers. This laser system is well suited for ablating polymers and metals with a high resolution and accuracy and with a high feed rate due to the integrated scanner optics. This video shows how fast the laser ablation process in plastics can be using the neodymium yak laser system. The scanner optics is moving the green laser beam over the workpiece while it cuts through the material. Here a Wheaton seal. This slide shows two more exotic and even more precise laser systems for microstructuring. The one above shows an Exima laser with a wavelength of 193 nanometers and the one below shows a picosecond laser with a wavelength of 1030 nanometers and a pulse rate of up to 600 kHz. Both laser systems are used for accurate drilling, fine cutting, thin film removal and prototyping of fluidical and optical structures in metal or polymers. This picture shows a hot embossing machine which uses a mold which is pressed into a flat heated polymer substrate to generate two and a half dimensional parts. Molds of different materials are possible high strength plastics, silicon, nickel phosphorus, brass, copper, etc. Compared to injection molding, the molds can be simpler, 
having the possibility to generate several structured features in plastic parts in one hot embossing step. Parts need a subsequent post-processing process, like milling, for separating the individual parts. This means that hot embossing can be seen as a link between rapid prototyping methods and mass production technologies. As you might know, the most common mass manufacturing method for thermoplastics is injection molding using molten polymer material injected into a closed cavity, the actual injection molding tool. Our machine here at IMM is a compact electrohydraulic machine allowing a maximum temperature up to 140 degrees, a maximum shot weight of 20 grams and the realization of parts twice a card in credit. This slide shows a cold runner injection molding tool with two molding nests with brass mold inserts, milled by a diamond tool mill to achieve superb surface quality allowing optical elements in the plastic part. The picture below shows the actual PMMA chip with four subsequently glued on reservoirs and a bonded on foil on the other side. The smallest channel size on the chip is 50 by 50 micrometers. This slide shows another injection molding tool, this time a hot runner tool, with a circular molding nest realized by electro discharge machining. The picture next to the tool shows the actual circular cartridge realized with it, made from black polycarbonate with a diameter of 100 mm. After producing a microfluidic plastic cartridge, it can be necessary to assemble parts into the plastic part. For example, a microstructured sensor like it is shown here. One possibility is to apply an adhesive to the plastic surface, then press the components together and cure the adhesive. Gluing is a mass production compatible process, even microstructured components can be safely bonded. A suitable application process must be developed to achieve a uniform coating thickness without air inclusion, for example by using capillary forces for a UV clue which is hardened afterwards. This can be seen in the picture below showing a sensor with gold electrodes for electrochemical sensing. A pressure stability allowing more than 3 bar is easily possible. Another bonding method, mostly used to actually close the open fluidic channels in a plastic cartridge with a foil or a lid, are surface activated bonding methods. By applying a solvent to this plastic surface and subsequent pressing of the components, the solvent evaporates and a permanent connection is generated. Alternatively, without solvent, it is possible to activate the polymer surface by a short UV or plasma radiation process to increase the surface energy and then press the components together. Advantageous here is that two plastics of the same material can be joined without an additional adhesive layer. A pressure stability bigger than 10 bar is easily possible. Another widely used industrial bonding or welding method for metals and plastic parts is the introduction of melting energy by means of infrared laser radiation while simultaneously clamping the components together. Somewhere in the contact zone the laser radiation needs to be absorbed by one component or the dye. Two plastics of the same material can be joined and many thermoplastics are laser available. For example, ABS, SAN, PMMA, PS, PC, POM, PA, COC or COP. It is a cost-effective process with short cycle times, only a few seconds, which is easily to automate. Several beam forms can be applied like contour welding, simultaneous welding with a static focus line or mask welding with a moving laser beam. A pressure stability bigger than 10 bar is possible. Available at IMM is a neodym yak laser for contour welding and two diode bar lasers for simultaneous welding. The left picture shows an example of a contour welding process, while the right picture shows an example of a simultaneous welding process. Both examples use a black absorbing part, which is then sealed with a transparent lid foil on top. In contrary to the examples before, which used a completely black part, here, an infrared absorbing dye is applied to the surface of the cover foil, which was used to seal the open channels in the plastic cartridge. Only a very thin layer of the dye is absorbed into the polymer, allowing a very precise process control when both pieces are brought into contact during the laser welding process. 
This video shows the actual laser welding process of a polycarbonate cartridge, seeding it with a die-coated cover foil. A transparent glass cover is pressed on top of both foil and polymer cartridge, while the laser is coming from above. The polymer part is moved simultaneously underneath the infrared diode laser, having a width of 30 mm, both forward and in reverse to allow for a complete seeding process of the upper side of the cartridge. An alternative to laser welding, which is also widely used in industrial welding processes, is ultrasonic welding, allowing very short cycle times, only a few seconds. Ultrasonic welding generates a high frequency vibration, usually between 20 to 40 kHz, transferred into the plastic part via a vibrating ultrasonic horn. Local plasticizing starts at the so-called energy director, a weld seam that must be present around the structure to be sealed. Two plastics of the same similar material can be joined. Many thermoplastics are ultrasonic weldable. ABS, SAN, PMMA, PS, PC, POM, PA, COC, COP for example. A pressure stability bigger than 8 bar is easily possible. The pictures on the left show top views of welded energy directors, running around the microfluidic channel, which is closed by a lid. The therefore generated molten welding seams can be seen as clear lines in the picture below. The pictures on the right show two examples of welded parts. On top a part welded with a lid, below a part welded with a 100 micrometer thick foil, in cross-sectional views, showing the energy directors after welding. Coming to the conclusions, the IMM has more than 15 years of experience in systems engineering. An interdisciplinary team of specialists from physicists, engineers, design, electronics, software, plastic processing, biologists, biochemistry and molecular biology, and chemists are able to master almost any challenge. A wide range of manufacturing and bonding technologies is established at IMM. Throughout many years of experience, we are also familiar with the specific requirements regarding documentation and robustness.